Hi guys, uh, this is part two of the uh, attempt at uh, showing some post-production stuff. What was that? Itchy nose again. <laughs> um, I'm doing this before I put the uh, video together. Uh, this is just a quick lead-in and to be honest I'm not quite sure how it's going to work out. What I've done is I've got uh, two or three clips from uh, previous videos and I've shot a few other clips to help try and make a point and I'll try and describe uh, the various things as I go through. How it'll work out I'm not quite sure and I don't know whether the uh, sound will be okay. I've got to test that and see if it's not quite up to scratch. Apologies. But uh, I think it'll probably do. Um, I doubt if I should cover every single thing I mentioned in part one, but the prime things are to do with lighting level, sound level, transitions, you know, all that sort of stuff. And I didn't mention in part one uh, an intro is not really necessary. Uh, it's nice if you can put a few seconds of intro on, gives you your sort of identity. Uh, it can take quite a bit of work so it again depends what facilities you've got for editing. Um, if you don't have an intro don't worry too much. A lot of people don't and it doesn't matter, just a bit of text to give it a title, maybe that's all you need. Okay, so I'm going to try this, see what the hell happens, and I'll put something on the end, uh, either to apologise for the load of crap, <laughs> or to uh, highlight any any things I didn't uh, perhaps quite explain properly. All right, so here we go. <laughs> here goes nothing. Okay, guys. I'm having sound problems, trying to get a decent balance. Quality is not very good with this uh, screen capture software, but anyway, here we go. Quick look at the construction of my intro screen. This bit here is an overlay text for the copyright. This middle video track is the old man's shop, yellow. The video track at the bottom is the cogs, recorded out of uh, Inventor. At the very bottom is the uh, music track and over here we've got the overlay track for the uh, title text and description. That's overlaid on a shot picture, part of it, which is partly transparent. And then the uh, logo in the corner, that's just a big ping file. and. Uh, that can be stretched out over the duration of a video. Later I'll cover the meaning of these things. This is all to do with fading in and out. These are all, this for instance, is fade out to black and then fade back in from black to the uh, text. Later on I'll show you other bits. I'll just play this briefly. The sound will probably be pretty bloody awful. <laughs> There you go, just to give you some idea. You've seen it before. Anyway, let's proceed to some other uh, factors. Alright guys, let's try this uh, few odds and ends here. I'm going to mute the soundtrack because I don't need that for now. I'll have to cover the sound in a different way later, possibly with some captions. Um, this was uh, just a bit of handheld on the chuck, but it's too dark. My camera prefers daylight, and uh, the editor makes things maybe a little darker. But uh, from habit here, I'll change that to 20%. It's a useful feature to have. And this here, this angle is particularly dark. 
I've changed that to 30%. It's a very useful feature. I don't know how many other editors allow that. And I did actually change here to overhead light, which threw the uh, color balance initially. And then it does settle down a bit. So that's the uh, tweaking for brightness. In fact, that's a bit too much now in that uh, area. Go back to 25, somewhere around there. Anyway, whilst we're here, uh, this at the moment would be what we'd perhaps call a straight cut. We just go from one clip to another, pop straight over. But I've mentioned before, I think, very often a bit of free space at the end and beginning of clips is useful. On this one, the movement at the end, we can shorten it slightly. This one can make a quick, uh, it's just that little bit of movement just there. I can cut that out. And then a straight cut would actually probably be a little bit cleaner. There, yeah, it's not too bad. But I've uh, been talking about transitions and probably the one I use most rather than a straight cut is just a fade and that will transition you from one picture to the other probably about that sort of speed can be fast, uh, faster, can be slower um, and then the other option this all depends what you're changing from one thing to another if you're changing from one machine to the other you might decide to go this way which would uh, take you to black and then back to the new clip equally instead of that you might decide to do what I might call a clever dick <laughs> I use them quite a lot but I don't use them as much now uh, this one I think is a bit gimmicky but you could do this if you're making a really major change from one machine or operation to another. That's what I'd call a very gimmicky one. Put that back to default. And perhaps something like, this is a fairly useful one. And some editors will have more options than I have. That's quite a useful one. Another one I rather like and use sometimes is a version of uh, page roll. And that I think looks quite nice. I'll put this back to default, which would then just be a longer normal fade. All right. OK, that covers enough for this little section. Uh, let's see what we're going to do next. I'm having to do some of this in a rather roundabout way. I've again muted the uh, audio track. Um, this was an old bit of video, and that's autofocus, which is struggling because I'm zoomed in a bit too far. You might there see it darkens a, a bit with the finger. Now this bit here, trying to demonstrate the problems of autofocus I have, uh, we're going to move the camera down and get some more chips in frame. And the camera gradually <laughs> focuses on the chips which is most annoying and that is where some auto uh, manual focus will get over the problem that's happened in a few videos in the past now on this clip I've just added here I've switched to uh, manual focus which is a bit fiddly uh, have to actually touch the uh, camera view screen at the point you want to focus, but you might notice now that the center here is sharpened up. I meant to mute that. So 
So I'll put this back in later in full edit editor mode. Um, this has got the chips out of the way and even if we get this rotating it will hold focus. Right. Right, just part of a clip here. You might hear odd noises from the computer, by the way. <laughs> um, this is just to illustrate an option when you're zooming. My camera mount is not very steady. You can see when I'm zooming that uh, whilst it's going from uh, zoomed out to zoomed in, there's movement. So if I can pick the point, if I make a cut there and proceed to being zoomed in, get rid of the shake, there, cut that, get rid of that piece, a little bit of short transition there and then try it again all right so that is helpful if your camera moves when you're trying to zoom mine certainly does it's rather perched all right in fact I don't think I got the uh, let me check lighting that lighting on that clip wants to be upped by probably 10% and this one being closer in that's probably going to need 25 try 25 just quickly there we are but again you can see glare in fact that can probably come down nearer 20% to be adequate so my lighting isn't very good all right, that's just another little bit. Now this is a bit of a mix really, but I wanted to talk about uh, speed and again we can cover lighting. This is in the mill with virtually ambient light, which is not ideal. We'll probably have to lift that up to about 30%. That's uh, probably usable. And we're going to cut a screwdriver slot. It's a bit of a weird angle. But uh, just odd points we can make. You see here I'm moving around and trying to get sorted. And I think I've already got manual focus set. Yes, yeah, so that angle looks very odd. Um, I've just come up to the point where we're going to start there, all right? If I make a cut and move along, I'm going to find that we can actually virtually cover. I'm going to exaggerate this greatly. Right, I'll make another cut here and then speed this up. I'm going to go to extreme levels, I'd normally go to about maybe six on this, so I'll go to eight. I can't uh, demonstrate the soundtrack change, I'd have to do that in direct edit mode. Now, if I give these two very small fades just for tidiness sake we'll get this and that of course is quite adequate to show what's going on you can see what's being done and there's no need really to have things uh, running at uh, normal speed which would take too long all right I think that covers what I wanted to in this bit. I'm just checking here. You see at the end there, you see that? 
That was where the camera was being switched off. If I catch the point at which the movement air yeah, just started some movement. If I move on the timeline, I can now make a new end which finishes without the uh, shake as I uh, move the camera. Right? Now this is probably the last thing I'll bother with in screen capture. I'll come back to this clip or parts of it. Um, this really is, let me just get rid of that uh, cut that I made. Right, this is just a setup for a demo and I can probably add some narration to this in direct edit mode. All we're doing here is just a dummy setup and I'm looking at some lighting here. I'll probably run this uh, directly with its soundtrack. Let's mute that a minute. So I'm playing with the lighting, talking about glare. And sometimes the ambient lighting is adequate. This is a zoom in. You can see I get some movement. It might be a case there of uh, doing a transition from zoom out to zoom in. And then I set up my manual focus on the drill and we run through and finish. Uh, I'll show you that speed up in edit mode. As you know my floor is very flexible. Everything moves, particularly when I'm zoomed in. So, and that I didn't already do it. I forgot. <laughs> I think we probably need about 25%. That uh, makes the lighting, <coughs> excuse me, let's go back to the beginning. And that's brought the lighting up there a little bit. All right, okay, I'm going to switch to direct edit mode now and see what I can do with that. I'm still having problems with sound and I don't know how the whole concoction is going to work out. We'll have to see. Now I did discuss text in my uh, part one, but I thought I'd just cover that again briefly. I'll have to do this in stages or it'll take too long. Now that's uh, good old times, which I don't want. So I'm going to change that uh, to another font. Now I've changed that to Gil Sands Condensed, which uh, helps me get a bit more in a given width. And uh, then there's the color aspect. And most people know that I tend to use yellow. And if I change that to red, you can see that it's not very legible on black. Equally, if I change to dark blue, I don't know whether you can even see that. Now in this one I've changed the background to a sort of middle grey. Uh, now that yellow, I say I rather like it. Uh, we could have maybe a light green or light blue, but anyway. The other thing is to have a an uh, outline which for this size, I don't know, three pixels black, shall we say. Now the thing here is that the outline, if I change the background actually to, uh, uh, to white briefly, you can see that the outline helps, although the letters are light color, that the uh, outline helps it stand out. If I go back to a sort of medium grey again, in fact we'll make that a bit bigger. So this is where, if that goes back to black for instance, oh this isn't black, there's black. The, uh, out, the outlops, I'm zooming in, 
um, the outline doesn't show put that back in the middle the outline doesn't show because it's also black but uh, the whole point of the exercise is depending when you're putting a caption on a, um, a clip that um, you get the best of both worlds if you're on a light patch the black outline will pick out the lettering and if you're on black then obviously the lighter color helps so that's where I'd have my captions and as most people know I use yellow with a bit of outline your choice of font of course is you can have anything you like it's all kinds of crazy stuff I'm sure other people have got plenty to choose from so that's a matter of choice just avoid dark blue and dark red <laughs> that's my thinking anyway Here's an example of uh, handheld, just looking at the fore jaw, getting ready to set up a centre there, and uh, the sound level will be noticeably higher. So I'll uh, drop it back about 3 dB or so to uh, balance out better with other levels. With the camera close to the voice source, and then we'll switch to another angle. Now I allowed about four or five seconds after switching the camera on to make sure the uh, support had stabilized because it does move a bit. And now we're zoomed right out. Having moved further away, we want to lift the volume, so we'll give that a bit of a lift. And I've actually moved, I'm now about uh, five, six feet away from the camera, which will reduce the sound level. Uh, that's an example when I might want to artificially pull it back up again. Now over the lathe itself, I'm probably 18 inches from the camera, so the sound level will be that much higher again. Now because my camera support is not very steady, if I go to zoom in, you can see that little movement as I finish. So what I'll do next is to do a transition. So now I can transition to close in. Just rerunning the uh, screw head slotting and on this one I'll uh, put some music on the back. Not everybody likes music and I've more or less stopped using it. Now just uh, the other mill footage, uh, one or two points I'll put in captions above, uh, changes in uh, level, whatever, and another speed up but with no music, just a bit of machine sound. Now this is just a mock up and I'm about uh, three feet from the camera, which usually requires a little bit of lift of the sound level. Here there is no extra lighting. The camera is coping with ambient, which I would probably still have to lift. But if I put other lighting on, it will start to bring out a certain amount of glare on shiny surfaces. Uh, it all depends on the direction of light. And that one is actually producing a bit more glare so I could cope with that lighting. Now I've referred to my zoom setting which is medium speed but also that could be 
cut out and we could go from one view to the next. I'm checking focus. I have to touch the screen to get it to focus on the end of the drill. And then if I was going to use it we'd just go ahead in which case I might well do a speed up. Now that didn't actually take all that long in real time but uh, if it's speeded up it makes things a bit better I think. Well guys <laughs> there you have it. Uh, just an attempt to cover some of the main things that can uh, possibly be used to enhance the uh, finished result of a video. As has been said before very many uh, video producers we see do a, actually a very fine job but it's those who are perhaps a little bit newer to the process uh, who might be able to polish their work a bit more. Uh, I didn't demo a radio mic. Uh, they can be very useful. Main consideration is avoiding mic picking up uh, breathing or possibly rubbing on clothing. In fact mine I noticed seemed to be uh, affected by my cell phone. <laughs> Another possible consideration. Uh, nothing it's mentioned is definitive and uh, it's just what's been found over time really to help my own work. Always trying to improve <laughs> all the time. Uh, the main things covered were light, sound, focus, transitions as well as some text matters. Uh, and unfortunately the screen capture software I was using was really not very good for sound. Didn't have many options such that apparent AGC resulted in clipping and so some distortion. Uh, tried to adjust a bit with level and adding some treble but still uh, pretty crappy I'm afraid. I'm sorry about that. Uh, it's hoped that uh, viewing full screen might have helped with some of the screen capture sections and after those we just added a few more examples. Whether it's helped anybody at all is, is hard to know uh, but it may possibly have sparked a bit of interest. Uh, I'd like to have done it better but that's it for now. <laughs> uh, right. To finish off, here's another parrot joke. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did one last time, didn't I? Here's one more, if I can get it right. Uh, a newly married couple were settled into their new home and decided to buy a parrot for a pet. They found a very handsome specimen, which they were assured was a good talker. Uh, so they took it home, complete with a spacious, fancy cage. It was not long, however, before they discovered a problem. The bird not only had a huge, impressive vocabulary, but was continually making crude comments and casting innuendo, even when the couple was merely hugging or kissing. This became very tiresome, and they told the parrot that any more of this nonsense, and they would either get rid of it, or take it to a zoo. And they also turned the cage so it faced the wall so the bird couldn't see what they were doing all the time. Uh, this did help. The parrot seemed to behave a bit better. But the time came when the couple was preparing to go on vacation and in order to travel light and uh, save some expense they planned to use just one large suitcase for the two of them. But they did, however, rather overfill it, and so had a struggle to get it shut, resorting to extreme measures to try and get it to lock. Tell you what, 
the husband said, you jump on top. That didn't work. Oh, well you try on top, hun, said the wife. That didn't work either. Okay, said the husband, let's both get on top together. From the parrot cage in the corner came Zoo or no damn zoo, this I have got to see. <laughs> they are. That's a pretty silly. Um, anyway, there we are. We're approaching some uh, pretty damn cold Arctic weather. Uh, the shop will probably be impossible for a bit. I mean, I've got a space heater, which works quite well, but it burns through a lot of caro. Uh, so we'll be back as and when, hopefully. <laughs> and for now, many thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.